Get ready for hot takes and insight from local industry experts in real estate, business, and lifestyle. He used to play ball with the Padres. He played hockey for the Lobos. Now they're crushing it in the real estate game. Together, they'll showcase the best of the Duke City. This is All About You, ABQ. Yeah, that's right. It's all about you, ABQ. Now, the goal of the show is to highlight the best of our city's industry experts in real estate, culture, lifestyle, and just so that you walk away with some value and feeling inspired. Now, the way we like to do that is to answer the questions that you may have or interview the guests that you want to see. So we invite you to join the conversation. You can reach out using the hashtag below or join our email list to get some timely tips about our community and real estate market. Hey, I'm Skip. It's Sold by Skip Real Estate Brokerage here in Albuquerque. Hi, Grant Harvey, uh, NMLS 94361, and I'm a mortgage broker here in town. And Skip, you may have seen Skip from HETV's uh, House Hunters, and he's one of the top producers in the nation in real estate. Thank you for that. Yeah, and you probably recognize Grant as the head coach of the University of New Mexico men's Lobo hockey team but now he's absolutely crushing it in the mortgage space. So Grant, dude. yeah, happy 2023, Skip. It's a new year, yeah. new to me, same show, same yeah. set, yeah. same energy. I'm feeling good, you're looking good. I feel good, I feel a little trim this year. You know, my, okay. my New Year's resolution in the first two days was, was to drop 20 pounds and I feel like my cheekbones are really starting to show. I yeah, feel, feeling good. He was uh, sometimes Skip can get a little pudgy, and so now he's working on it. His resolution is to not be pudgy anymore. And, and I've been complaining about it. I'm the skinniest. I'm still got this. Let's talk about you. Then. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, let's talk about resolutions, right? That's a new way to get in the year. Let's. What do we do to improve ourselves? Are we striving to be better? What's a resolution that you've had? No, that's a good point. And, and I think it, it really speaks to 2023 and growth. And I, I feel like from 2022, one of the things that we wanted to do was make a, 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 an effort to be more proactive in the community. And that was kind of the birth of UABQ. So I'm excited to see where this show takes us this year. Yeah. Talk a little bit about some things that you're expecting this year. Yeah, to touch on that, um, I think that was kind of a pipe dream of, of Skip and I's to go make a show. And we kind of were doing some Facebook, uh, Facebook lives, and we do some YouTube uh, segments, but I think our commitment this year was to do something on a weekly basis. So I think we're doing well and we're following through in 2023. I think that I also wanted to start baking more this year. <laughs> and I don't know if that'll help out the community. We'll see how the, 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 the pastries turn out, but that's, my sister got me this mixing bowl last year and I forgot that I liked it. And then I, uh, she, she gave it to me for Christmas and I said, why did you give me this? Okay, <laughs> so I decided that I'm gonna make use of that baking like mixer and I'm gonna become a baker. Well, and I'll let you know how it turns out, I will bring evidence of my, uh, my baking, not that you could be able to taste it, but how's that? I love it. I love the visual of you licking, uh, just licking uh, cooking bowls. Yeah, and just this, this apron. This, and this is the apron I'm going to wear. I'm actually just going to cut off the sleeves and use it as an apron um, after the show. So I, I don't think I could do that after hours. But um, yeah, I'm, this is my apron. So. Uh, here's why you're going to want to stay tuned. The, now, the goal of the show is to highlight some of the industry experts in, in Albuquerque and surrounding areas. We're going to be joined by an organization called Lapdog Rescue which is a fantastic organization and it speaks to our heart because I am the owner of two lap dogs and I know Grant has been big in to lap dogs over the years. In fact, if you go to his house, you'll, there's a good chance you're gonna be surrounded and attacked by Pomeranians, yeah. which is both good and bad. It was where you always wanna have dark clothes on because they tend to shed them. <laughs> the damage is relative with Pomeranians. That's why they're probably the safest guard dog in history. Um, I have three Pomeranians and you know, Skip's parents had uh, small dogs, and I've had small dogs over life. So when when we heard that our guest was coming on, I was pretty pumped. I go, man, I'm a, such a believer in small dogs, and I love big dogs too. But I just feel like when you get small dogs and they're acting bad, uh, the worst thing that happens is you know they may nibble on pencils or something. Yeah, and then you just they, put them in a box. Eat up too many ants. Put them on the shelf when you're done with them. <laughs> yeah. um, no, so lapdogrescue.org, and we'll talk a little bit about that in the next segment, but. I, growing up, I, we always had big dogs, and it, you know, as the as, as the kid in the house, every Saturday it was like, guess what you get to do is go clean up the backyard. And big dogs equal a big mess. And so one of the fun things about little dogs is just like little little tootsie rolls they leave you just like flick them into the neighbor's yard. Yeah, this is a, we're we're really we're killing our topics here. <laughs> 
Let's uh, uh, let's move on to um, let's talk current events because yeah. I think that you know as we as we move forward into into the real estate uh, market this year, there's a, you know a couple things to keep an eye on, and it's always tough to gauge where we are in the market during this time of year. In the middle of winter, it's Christmas, it's holidays, it's New Year's. The last thing on a lot of people's minds, especially sellers, is putting their home on the market. So we have seen that seasonal dip in inventory, yeah. and it, it a little bit of a challenging time because you know interest rates have been historically low right. for mortgage rates over the past two years. Talk a little bit about where you see us right now. Um, well, I mean, the rates are still up there. The other thing that, that you experience is a lot of people don't want to move during the winter months for kids, right? So they don't want to uproot um, their, their kids from their school and, and usually traditional moving time is, is summers. Um, so, I mean, that's another low, but yeah, interest rates are um, still mid sixes and, and it's a lot lower than what we were used to seeing. So people got used to twos and threes and anything higher than that just seems uh, irreverent and, and something that they wouldn't be able to pull the trigger on. So we have, we have really um, lofty expectations to where uh, rates ought to be and it's kind of hampering people from pulling the trigger and moving on uh, to get into a house. And so we have what low inventory, right? There, there's no houses to sold to get into the next one. So yeah, I mean, we're in a we're in a debacle here and I'm hoping rates turn around. We're supposed to see something in the summer rates lowering, but you know, supposed to with rates, that's not really a thing. You're not, rates aren't supposed to do anything, but that's the projection. <laughs> well, I think that's a good transition. And as we wrap up this first segment into the mortgage minute. Okay, today I wanna to talk about credit and more importantly, uh, derogatories, collections, and what you ought to do about them. I think it's important for you to check your credit early and often so you see what you have to prepare for if you are going to buy a loan. Um, what I see often, and any of you guys can basically attribute this, I, I was guilty of this, you, you look at your credit report and you see a $27 copay, and you see you've got three or four of them, and it, it drops your credit immensely. Um, the, the problem with some of the collections is, and I know this will sound really topsy-turvy, but if you pay those collections, oftentimes it'll bring your credit score down. Why is that? Is because it renews the issue date. So a lot of times if, you, if people are gonna negotiate a collections, you would call the number, you find out uh, how to pay it, and you would actually insist that they send a letter and they do a credit deletion. Otherwise, if they can't promise that, don't pay those collections off. I know it sounds backwards, but it's the truth and it's, it's, it's how you will actually be able to save your credit score and improve it. No, it's always good information, Greg. We, we appreciate you taking the time to, to put together the Mortgage Minute for us. Coming up in the next segment, here's why you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned. We have Brian from Lapdog Rescue, who's brought in a friend, Mr. Wrinkles. Yeah. And if you haven't met Mr. Wrinkles, I gotta tell you, he's full of character, does love to bite your fingers if you're not careful. Um, and then stay tuned to the end of the show. And I can't believe this is the first time I'm bringing this up because for the most part, I know why you came back. I know why you guys all came back this week and that's for Skip's, Skip's Tips. Tips. <laughs> so stay tuned. So in this segment, we're joined by Brian Spence of lapdogrescue.org. And if you're like us and you, you know, you're a fan of a small dogs, then you're gonna love this segment. Uh, Brian br brought his buddy, uh, Johnny, AKA Mr. Wrinkles. Mr. Wrinkles. We've yeah. been there. Uh, we have the pleasure of uh, playing with this little dog and he's just a, he's a neat little guy, but I mean, this just speaks to probably the many that you would get a chance to uh, adopt, but I won't get too far into that. Let's uh, let's get into it. Well, yeah, let's welcome Brian from Lapdog Rescue. Dog. Do, thank you for being here. Thank, thank you, you for inviting us. We appreciate it. One thing that you and I discussed is how Lapdog Rescue has been around for a while, but it's mm -hmm. been a challenge to get kind of the media coverage and the boost that you guys needed just to be, uh, you know, at the forefront of Lapdog and uh, rescuing Lapdogs. Yeah, basically uh, we don't advertise or anything. It's always word of mouth. Yeah. Um, and it's just been, you know, we've been around 29 years now and just hanging in there. Yeah. And um, so here we are. Uh, we're, we're getting uh, better known. Yeah. And um, again, a, a lot of it is still word of mouth. People say, uh, oh, we have a friend who adopted from you. We love, they love you and, and they come to us. Well, that's how we met because, he, you know, the word of mouth of, of from Lapdog Rescue is you know, it has such a great impact on the community. And the reason that we think that, you know, you're such a great fit for the show is because born and raised Albuquerque kid, right? That's right. 
uh, very similar to me and, and to Grant as well. Moved away for a little bit, but yep. found your way back to Albuquerque. Talk mm -hmm. a little bit about that. I mean, Sandia High School. Yeah, um, my dad was actually in the Air Force, the Kirtland Air Force Base, and my mom was at Highland, and they met, and uh, they, I guess it was 65. I'm gonna be 57 next month, whether you guys really, <laughs> but uh, they met and uh, got married, and uh, of course I came around and um, uh, grew up here, uh, went to Sandia High School. Uh, I think like a lot of young people, wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do with myself. I just knew I wanted to get away. So I went and did other things, ended up going to school, and then I came back to Albuquerque in 1992 and uh, worked in the defense industry. And uh, my mom and a friend of hers started Lapdog, and it was one of those things, you know, can you help do this or can you help do that? And uh, so she roped me in and um, my mom was the president of Lapdog, but I kind of ran everything, you know, she took care of the website and she was, my mom was working on at Sandia Labs at the time and it was, then my dad passed away. So then she really needed more help. And so I kind of took it from there and it was just kind of her and I and, and once in a while we would have some volunteers would help. Um, she paid a lot of the bills out of her own pocket. And, um, you know, along the way, uh, we've picked up some amazing volunteers. How many, how many would you say you have now? Um, again, varies. Um, I, I have my, my team who takes, you know, Barbara takes care of the finance stuff and Julie does the intakes and Jan does the rescue Ivy. And let's see, Liz does the foster stuff and whatever. And I just kind of herd the cats, you know, to kind of sure. keep everybody in the right direction. But uh, a lot of retired, some retired Sandians uh, on our board. Um, so we run Lapdog like a business. It is a business and it's run like a business. And um, it's very important for us to know that when people donate to us, what we use, the, the money is going for what they, they, you know, it's for the dogs. Mm -hmm. And um, so anyway, I would say it, probably 40 people, including fosters. Yeah. And again, depending on the time of year, because we have teachers sometimes and they have to go back and teach. So they only do it during the summer yeah. um, or and some don't do it. And so it, again, it, it varies. One thing I asked you, uh, you know, when we were originally talking is, you know, is there a, a home base, a big facility with, in my in my mind, and, and I'm sure you've the same thing too. When you think of Lapdog Rescue, you think of like this gorgeous ranch with like puppies running oh, I, everywhere. I wish, but no, no, we're, we're foster based. Yeah. Um, the fosters are, oh, base, I'll just give you a, a very quick, rundown of how things work. Mm -hmm. um, we have a, a private network that we have uh, rescue partners, meaning the shelters around the state. We have people there, what they'll do is they'll say, look, we've got a dog that, you know, would you guys take this? And what we do is Julie posts the dogs. A foster will say, yes, I'll take the dog. We'll arrange for transport if they're outside of the city of Albuquerque. Otherwise, um, the, the foster is responsible for picking up the dog bring them in uh, we uh, evaluate what they need as far as medical um, they we get them uh, ready to or I, I schedule the vets most of the time and they get them to the vet they get spayed or neutered they get heart room checked microchip fully vaccinated if they need dentals we do dentals um, but the, the the fosters are required that's what they they do is they take care of all that stuff I was, uh, we were talking beforehand, I was lucky enough to meet one of the volunteers, it was uh, Lori Balmer, right. mm -hmm. um, and I was kind of somewhat aware about what how the system worked, and she would have to, oftentimes, she did real estate, but she had the liberty of going to pick up dogs, so I think yep. a lot of what, some of her Our job was to go yeah. find, like, go get the dogs, yep. we, and then, you know, take them in we for do a nap. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we have volunteers that will, um, if a dog needs to go be picked up, or say a foster can't make an appointment or something, then we... Uh, a volunteer will will pick the dog up and take care of that. Would so. you like to break down the pricing? I think that's important sure. only because I'd like to just basically uh, preface that the, the the adoption fees aren't what makes this program tick. They're no. just they're just the tip of the iceberg. So yeah. go go ahead and give the rundown of what uh, the base. The, our adopt our standard adoption fee is one ninety five. Okay, and uh, that goes from uh, dogs from seven months up to eight years old. And that again includes spay and neuter, microchip, heartworm chest, um, 
they need a dental, we get the dental done. Uh, so they're fully vetted. It's really difficult for us to to get a dog and, and we'll you know do the standard stuff and then adopt and say, oh, by the way, you need to go out and get a very expensive <laughs> dental. He needs a wheelchair. So we do have, uh, we negotiate prices with our vets and um, we, we take care of it there then so that the when a dog goes to his new home they don't need anything it's all taken care of let's talk about the real star of the show and that's mr wrinkles over yep. here johnny yep. on the website so the website is lapdogrescue.org yes give us the background i know you said you're, you're you guys are international now so what's johnny's backstory how did he um johnny was at the aztec shelter in aztec new mexico and uh, we had a volunteer up there picking up some dogs and it's not a big shelter and he was there and the unfortunate part is just you look at him he's nothing special about him he was very shy not terribly good health and unfortunately some shelters what we call high kill shelters through no fault of their own they get overwhelmed with dogs they sometimes have to euthanize for space she saw him and she sent a message and said would somebody on the our page would somebody take this guy I said, okay, yeah. so I took him and um, he apparently was with a, a lady who had several dogs that passed away. And again, he, you know, he, I don't know if he had much exposure to anybody, but when I got him, he was very shy. Um, and so anyway, we got him vetted. And as you can tell, he's overcome his skinny. He's no longer skinny <laughs> and yeah. he's in excellent health yeah. and his personality the one thing you have people need to understand is the dog when you take in a new dog they take some time to adjust they need you have to give them some time that's why in our adoption agreement in our contract we give you 30 days to get your adoption fee back if it doesn't work out we want the dog back we'll take him back anytime but we figure 30 days is enough time for the dog to to adjust to you and vice versa mm -hmm. to give him an honest chance because at first you know he was scared of me he wouldn't come near me um, so, you know, at my house, it's not a tough life. They get up, they eat, they play all day, they eat again. <laughs> yeah, he's beat. He's already yeah, beat. He's yeah. had been play, play, playing with beach balls. And <laughs> yeah, he, and so, I, you know, I just try to give them a lot of attention. And once they get, you know, I can, I can look at a dog and tell kind of when they've turned this, the corner. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he um, is now, he's just a... Right now, he needs to get out and socialize with other people other than me. But other than that, he's a perfectly normal, happy dog now. He mm -hmm. plays. He use, He wasn't house trained. Now he uses my doggy door. He's crate trained. I crate train all of my dogs. They, that's where they sleep I, at I night. I think that's important. I think Absolutely. when people are going to adopt, they go, hang on, or there's some hesitation or reservations yeah. about getting the dog, right? And so I think that's a huge jump start where people say, okay, this guy's kind of ready to go out of the box, so to speak. Well, we try our best, you know, the, the more training they have, the easier it is to get them adopted. Sure. And, and not all of them are gonna be, I mean, he, the one thing I found out, he's great on a leash. Yeah. Um, who knew? Uh, but whatever the case, but the more training they have, the easier it is to get them adopted and the more likely it's gonna be a success. What, how many uh, dogs are, do you have right now in your, in your on the roster? Um, yeah. You know, I think we have maybe uh, 15 up for adoption right now. Now you have to understand how things have changed. It used to be, year, you know, maybe five years ago, we'd have as many as 50 dogs yeah. on uh, ready for adoption. Things have changed because now, again, because of the pandemic and we adopted everything that came in. And we now adopt pretty much all of the dogs that come in. So we never have a whole bunch of dogs. They usually come in and get adopted pretty quickly. What do you think that, so when I think lap dog, is there a cutoff when you go, okay, oh, you're um, 62 yeah, pounds, 20, you are 20, a sumo dog. They're we can't 25 take pounds. In. Okay. 25 pounds. But um, the thing is, is if we go into a shelter and two dogs, if he came in with a bigger dog, yeah. we don't leave family behind. Oh, I love that. Oh, we call, story. we make some, will you take this bigger dog if we do that? That's great. We, um, you know, if they're a bonded pair, we we have very good luck. We'll take larger breed, especially puppies. Okay. And we have good luck with them. The bigger dogs, people don't come to us to look for larger breeds. However, I know many great rescues who do larger breeds and I will always refer them. Um, so yes, the, the, this whatever the rescue is, they'll take care. So a couple ways people can find you. I know that it, you, you do a lot of networking on Facebook yep. and that's a great way to find you. Stay in, in, in touch with you for updates. Mm -hmm. Also, if 
I know that the adoption fee is not enough to keep the lights on, right? That's enough to keep the, the dog in place. Yeah. Talk about how, how the community can give back to you and Lapdog Rescue. Well, again, we rely on obviously the donations to pick up the slack, especially on dentals or whatever. Um, we're, you know, we have Amazon uh, uh, Smile, you know, people can sign up for that. What is that? Uh, it's Amazon. You can pick a, a charity. Oh, okay. And they give, like, I don't know what the percentage, but it's a very low percentage mm -hmm. of each purchase you make on oh, okay. Amazon goes to that. Oh, that's good. Sure. Okay. Well, we're with um, Albertsons. You know, you can designate uh, a charity or whatever. There's many ways you can make. It's not a ton of money, mm -hmm. but uh, usually December is our big uh, month. We send out for we I think three newsletters now usually around Christmas is when people donate to us um, we do a few fundraisers um, you know there's giving Tuesday so there's ways to raise money um, uh, again I think it, ha it comes down to the fact that people have to trust you with their money when they donate to you and know what you do so it's very important to us to show people this is where your money goes Good. That is and um, you know we you know, we have on occasion, somebody traveling through, we had a person uh, on I-40, they got crunched by a semi and they had a bigger dog. And they took the dog actually to one of our main vets and the bill was like $5,000. Well, we raised the money to pay the oh, bill wow. because these people, let's be honest, they didn't have the money to pay the bill. So we do things like that. Um, we, we're, we, uh, people will call us and say, or message us and say, my dog, broke his leg or something. It was an accident. I don't have the money. So we we will help with, with that as well. We we're very community oriented. We wanna we wanna help help the community in any way we can. Let's let's still tie this into community because you know Skip and I are very proud Albuquerque guys. Yeah. And we understand you went several places, right? And yeah. and you said you're near Gainesville and Gainesville, so Florida. being your experience with other places, what brings you back into New Mexico? You know, um, of course I grew up here. My my mom's family actually came out here in the 50s. They came out here for the dry, healthful climate. Yep. They came from back east. Um, so I, I had fam family out here. Actually, all I have left is my mom out here. They've all moved on, but it's just something, New Mexico has a beauty unto its own that it's, even when I'm in other places, I say, the people ask me from, I said, I'm from New Mexico. It's like, I drove through New Mexico. It's the most beautiful place I've ever seen. Some and I agree with them. I agree with them. Um, it, it's just, it's something about the people. It's the culture, the food, especially. You can't get, you know, New Mexican food, not Mexican, New Mexican food. Correct. Totally okay. different. Okay. It is, well, it is totally different. Yeah. And speaking of totally different, I know you grew up kind of in the city of Albuquerque, uh -huh. but most recently you've moved out. And what we're seeing is a lot of people vacating the city and yeah. really discovering the East Mountains. Yeah. And what, you know, for the new year, we got dumped on uh, a ton of snow. Yeah. And so we were worried that Brian was going to get stuck in this in, up in the mountains today. Yeah. What? What? You tell us how that works for you, right? I well, mean, um, I live in the Cedillo Hill area, and it's above seven thousand feet. So when they say there's a snowstorm coming through, you're never quite sure how <laughs> much you're going to get. I have a snowblower and I have a four wheel drive and whatever, but this whole this whole week has been snow, and then the sun come out and it'll melt. But yesterday it was a constant snow, yeah. so that's when I told you I said, "I'll I'll be here." But okay. you know it may like be it may be a little bit of a work. But um, you know we've had some years where we'll get a foot of snow, and then two days later another foot of snow, and I have pictures. I uh, my front I used to have a four foot fence where we had snow where I dug out and I yeah. literally had four feet of snow. So it can get crazy. It hasn't been like that in a while, but. Again, I love living in the East Mountains. Um, I live on two acres. My, um, my entire street, um, you know, my neighbors know that I do rescue and they're very supportive. Um, and uh, they're all dog people too. Mm -hmm. And, um, but it's, it's, it's really nice. I, we have each other's numbers and there's something like, hey, there! I saw a bear on the camera last yeah. night. Um, well, we don't adopt bears. So. Yes, we don't <laughs> adopt small, bears. Small but bears. everybody accuses yeah. me because in, in, in my house, I, I feed the birds. And oh. uh, I so I get, I get coyotes and raccoons and foxes and skunks. And every once in a while, a big deer will 
meander through the front yard. Sure. Um, but everybody, you know, I, I love animals and um, I just... Uh, well, I think that's one of uh, one of the great neighborhoods, you know, in and around Albuquerque is yeah. the East Mountains, whether that's... I, I, hey, look at Mr. Wrinkle well, just staring. He's making you know eyes. What I like about the, the snow is we found out Mr. Wrinkles is a snow dog, and so we, he got, <laughs> he pulled him in. Today. Yes, he and did. I was, dog. We hitched him up. Yeah. And, it was, and we, it was a Disney movie. In yeah, the movie. he you know, the Grinch dog? This yeah. is kind of him. There no, he, is. no he, they don't come out at my, my house is passive solar and have a wood stove, and they usually, and brick floors. So this they all, the setup. they like all, they all just yeah. hang out right there in front of the wood stove. You know, if I can, can get we him, move in, yeah. Yeah. Mr. When Mr. Wrinkles wins a whole clock, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I, I'm, a, I'm becoming a baker. You know, and of course, I have a doggy door that goes out to a, a, a covered, completely fenced in area that they can go out and do their business. Sure. Yeah. Some once in a while, they're just like, nah, I don't think so. No, I like, get it. But no, I, I agree. I love the East Mountains. Um, I like I like the price of the real estate out there now. Yeah, of course. Um, You're making some money. I know, yeah, I know you guys do real estate. One of my neighbors sold his house. A gentleman moved from California and paid 450k for it, and I was like, yes, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. But no, they're and they're great neighbors too. But it's it's a nice people are moving out there. I we had spoke earlier that some people, I think may, they may have unrealistic. Uh, you know, well, what, it's a little far from the amenities that you would find, you know, the Targets, the Walmarts. You, you got to find the right person to be out there. Yeah, and great, especially yeah. young couple. But what we have mostly is retired people. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the thing is, is when you move out there, most people. That no you don't good want, days, hard work. Yes, mm -hmm. you don't. And you just, you know, my neighbors, we wave and that's about it. We don't bother each other. People want to be left alone. Yeah. And it's a great place to live for that. Well, especially with dogs. And Brian, I, I just want to thank you for coming on, oh, man. You, you are the face. Yeah, of laptop. Unfortunately, but no. I am. That's great. You're a you, saint. This was yeah. this was a good interview. I I, I really love it. No, I'm show. I'm pretty well I'm pretty well known. Like I said, you're lucky I wore long pants today. <laughs> but I'm I'm wearing it for my shorts. It's kind of a joke. Well, it's you are you are definitely the face of UABQ, and yeah. Mr. Wrinkles will let you go back to sleep, Mr. my friend. <laughs> yes. Well, we get up. Yeah, I would imagine. So it's it's nap time. And so. his water bed is frozen. <laughs> <up> there, <so. laughs> yes. No. Well, here's why you're going to want to stay tuned to the next segment of the show. We're going to do a little bit of a wrap up, but I can't stress to you guys enough how important it is. It's everybody's favorite time. It's time for Skip's Hit. So in today's Skip's Tips, we're going to talk about four factors that may influence a seller's decision to accept an offer, okay? An offer is when a buyer is going to buy a house and they present some terms to the seller. So financing method, if you're a buyer and you're in a position where you have to get financing, that's there's nothing wrong with that. Sellers may be in a position where they wanna work with cash buyers over finance buyers, but there's a couple different things that go into uh, the seller's ability to accept an offer, right? Um, it's not just whether it's financing, there could be other terms that will affect it, okay? So if you are doing financing, it's important to work with a lender and get that pre-qualification letter, whether you're working with Vision Mortgage or another local brand lender, um, they're gonna issue you that pre-qualification letter that, that shows the seller you're a bona fide buyer. Or if you're a cash buyer, you wanna have proof of funds, which comes in the form of a bank statement or a letter from your bank that says, I promise I am, uh, I'm worth this uh, $1.5 million that I'm representing, so. Uh, next thing is sellers will typically look for a larger earnest money deposit. Now what that means is, you know, if the buyer's gonna make an initial deposit that shows that they have skin in the game, that they are on board with purchasing this home. So one to 2% of the purchase price as an earnest money deposit will show the seller that you are a, not only a bona fide buyer, but you have some skin in the game, okay? So when writing an offer, consider using fewer contingencies. A contingency is a certain way that a buyer can get out of the contract, whether that's an inspection, financing, appraisal. These are all contingencies that would allow the buyer to get out. So by a buyer offering fewer contingencies makes the offer stronger to the seller. So a lot of times seller will wanna work with a buyer who has fewer contingencies. So keep that in mind. And one thing you always wanna have your broker do is reach out to the seller and figure out timeline what's important to them do they need a quick close they have to be out of this house by the holiday or the new year or would they prefer a longer close um, or maybe a rent back situation because they don't have a place to go after they sell so these are a few things that will influence the seller's ability to accept your offer but also as a seller it's not just about the bottom line there are some terms that go into 
uh, accepting one offer over the other. So again, I wanna just thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Skip's Tips. So that's our show this week. Another great episode of UABQ. Yeah, I feel like that was one of my favorite guests we ever had, Brian Spence, Lab Dog Rescue. What a great guy, uh, Mr. Wrinkles, premier guest. Um, hopefully it's not indicative of our, of our hosting. He slept the whole time, but. <laughs> uh, we wanna encourage you to watch the show. It's every Wednesday night at seven, Sunday mornings, 9 a.m. 9 a.m. And to make that donation to uh, Lap Dog Rescue, you can visit lapdogrescue.org. Hit the donation button. And then again, follow us online uh, by using the hashtag UABQ, because at the end of the day, this is all about UABQ. UABQ.